Hey guys, this is Tonner. Today we're going to be talking about the four new commander decks. We have their face uh, commanders revealed. We have at least one of the new uh, critters that is going to be in it. Uh, each of them is going to have a special... Imagine critters, uh, planeswalker, or something else, essentially, like a what if, you know, the one example we've got is like, what if Tamio came over to Bloomborough, uh, which is really cool. I really like that. So we've got, you know, one of those to reveal as well as kind of talk about the face commanders and the decks overall. So the first one here we're going to be talking about is the animated army uh, deck. So this one here is... Uh, you know, based around Bellow Bard of the Brambles. He is going to, during your turn, turn each non-equipment and non-aura enchantment that costs four or more into a 4-4 elemental creature that has haste, indestructible, and then whenever it deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So lots of really great card draw from here, as well as just, you know, throwing random stuff at people, which is really cool. Now, the interesting thing here is that they specifically mentioned in the video, ramping into Calamity Beast. I don't know entirely if there's going to be like, you know, Calamity Beast in the actual deck or not, who knows? Uh, but they did talk about, you know, casting expensive cards to make sure you synergize alongside that expend mechanic and because those expensive cards are going to proc on you know bellows turn and bellows going to be able to animate them into creatures to be able to throw at people so looking at some of the cards that you can potentially use with him, uh, the new creatures that with the expend mechanic, obviously, all the raccoons will be having that, it looks like. And those are basically, if you spend over, you know, whatever mana on your turn, then you get a bonus. So the Wonder Tail Mentor, if you spend over four casting spells, then you're going to get to put a plus one, plus one onto it. Or this mirror here, when you expend over four, you get to put grain three life. And then also... When you expend over eight, exile the top two cards of your library. You've also got, you know, lots of different enchantments you can use, whether it's to force combat, deal additional damage or something like that. City of Fire is going to be a really great one. You know, Bedlam and Grand Melee, go make everyone fight each other, start the game up. You've got indestructible creatures, they don't. Force them to block. Uh, we've got like, you know, some big artifacts you can use as well. Chroma's Memorial, get all of your artifacts even bigger. Uh, you've got Chimil to be able to to discover five each turn insane dark steel monolith play something for free really really great as well we've got you know even vehicles and stuff right like vehicles are going to animate as well on your turn so if you've got vehicles then they're just going to be animated and and you don't need to crew them or anything right and, and then it's like you know whenever this attacks it's going to get its buff or lots of really cool things uh the skull spore nexus as well in case you do get board wiped then everything will come back as a huge green fungus from there, we've got the Family Mattis one. So this is Go Wide. Uh, it is built around Zinnia, who's going to be the face commander here. She's got flying and then also plus X plus zero, where X is the number of creatures you could roll with base power one. So it's base power one. And then she's going to give, or she or he, I don't know, uh, give all of your creature spells offspring two. So whenever you play a creature, you're going to be able to pay an additional two create a 1-1 one, one copy of that. So then, you know, that's got to proc off of here. You can make Xenia huge, right? So uh, obviously this is like an offspring focus. You want to make a lot of offspring, make, you know, a whole bunch of 1-1s. One, it's going to buff up Xenia as well as then you're going to be doubling all those ETBs that you've got and giving creatures uh, offspring with Xenia here. So some big things you could do here. Uh, I like Panharmonicon because, you know, it's going to... Ban Harmonicon, yeah. Uh, buff up all of those ETBs, impact tremors, because we're going to be making lots of tokens. Nesting Dovehawk is a secretly really strong card that I really love from um, March of the Machines. At the beginning of your combat on your turn, you're going to get to populate, so you get to copy one of those tokens that you've got, and then each time a creature comes in, it's going to also get a plus one, plus one, plus you've got the bird there. It's kind of thematic. I tried to aim towards cards that were kind of thematic here. Um, you know, a lot of kind of like Akim here, create a bird token each time you create a token. Uh, Plume Creed Mentor and those kinds of creatures that have, you know, when they proc and stuff, they're going to be procking an additional time because you're going to have two of them. Uh, other, you know, creatures like Dockside. Dockside can go bonkers with this, right? 
insane. Uh, we've got Spirited Companion as well. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Uh, you know, get to make draw two cards. We've got Displacer Kitten, which is going to make it so that we're going to be able to double all of those ETBs. Now, you won't get to pay the offspring cost again, but you will get to, you know, trigger those ETBs over and over again thanks to it. Next one here we've got is Hazel of the Root Bloom leading the Squirreled Away Commander deck. So it is built around, uh, you know, her ability. She's paying two, like she taps, pay two life, tap tokens, and then add mana from her. And then also at the beginning of your end step, you get to create a token that's a copy of a token. And then if that token was a squirrel, create two copies of it. So lots and lots of squirrels here. There is a, some squirrel tribal cards here, apparently, but also it is mostly focused around food and squirrel tokens. So, you know, stuff you can add in here, all of the kind of new squirrels that are coming out, all built around like the forage mechanic, which is either sack of food or exile cards from your graveyard to do something. You've also got the fact that, you know, a lot of kind of squirrel tribal stuff, it looks like ravenous squirrel here. Whenever you sack an artifact, given we've got foods, boom, we've got, you know, tap to add two mana if you sack a, a sack of food like you know you can get a lot of kind of food stuff in here uh lots of lots of squirrel stuff whether it's creatures that create squirrels here like nut collector also thresholds not going to be too bad in here either if you've got like you know some of the squirrel stuff that's self milling that looks like it's going to be coming out too toski just buff up a huge toski throw it at people uh and then draw cards from it cloakwood hermit i like as well get to create you know uh um, green squirrel tokens if any creature card was added into your graveyard. We've got, you know, Cache Grab, which is a new one. Mill four cards, then get a permanent back into your hand that is uh, milled. And then if you control a squirrel or return a squirrel to your hand, create some food. Vanishing, her uh, Vanishing Hermit here. Buff up your squirrel, create more squirrels. The new Chatterfang as well. Now keep in mind the new Chatterfang is not going to be in this deck, unfortunately. But, you know, Chatterfang is a card that you can potentially add in here, create more squirrels, and then you get to sack squirrels as well. I'm a little bit disappointed if you go sack all your squirrel babies, but if you want to sack squirrel babies, go ahead. Next, the last one here we've got is the Peace Offering deck. So this is built around Miss Bumbleflower here, who has Vigilance, and it is Group Hug to the max. Whenever you cast a spell, you get to make someone draw a card, and then you get to put a plus one, plus one onto something, and it's going to gain flying. And then if it's the second turn, time you've done it, you get to draw two cards. Lots of really great stuff that you can do here. Um, you are going to give someone else card draw, but you get to make give your creatures flying. Uh, apparently, it's focused around, you know, the gift mechanic. So, you're gifting things to people here. Have your gift, but then it's going to bite them in the ass later on. Very group hug, very friendly, but has ways to turn on people later on. So, some stuff, you know, the new gift cards, obviously, potentially you'll see in here. Uh, you know, whether it's gifting fish to be able to flicker things, whether it's, you know, wearing down. And then you get, if you gifted something, you get to destroy two uh, artifacts and enchantments. Kidnap here, you get to steal something. And if you gift something, then you get to use it straight away. Uh, other things, you know, lots of group hard cards i like the group hub cards that are you know this person gets to draw a card but then i get to do something because of that so like struggle for project purity here at the beginning of your upkeep everyone else gets to draw a card and then you get to draw cards based off those draw cards they drew master of ceremonies here um you know, you get to create treasures or, you know, create citizens or draw cards or the second doctor as well here. At the beginning of your end step, you get to, each person gets to draw a card and then each opponent who does, doesn't get to attack you, uh, you know, or encouraging other people to hit each other like Edric here. Uh, you know, if you go hit them, you get to draw a card. Would you like to do that? Uh, yes, man, you get to give yes man away, draw cards, and then everyone else gets to give him away. And then you get to create soldiers based off of that. Or then, you know, to go alongside it, free stride lookout here. This one here is whenever you commit a crime, guess what? Gifting something to someone would be a crime. Correct? You are targeting an opponent with it or, you know, targeting their creatures or something like that. You know, there's lots of great ways to commit crimes with <laughs> lots of ways to commit crimes here so you know going around even like miss bumbleflower here can technically commit a crime because she's giving target opponent draw a card so you get to get lands from them really nice 
Uh, and then in that deck is going to be Tamio here, the rabbit version of Tamio. Each one is going to have a different uh, one of these Imagine Critters deck. Uh, planeswalkers or something else and they're obviously going to play into it so this one here is choose up to two creatures until your next turn either one of those creatures deals combat damage you draw a card so you can target yourself and then target someone else be like hey you if you would like here your creature is going to draw a card if it deals combat damage don't hit me on my next turn please or something along those lines so i really like these decks let me know down in the comments what you guys think have a great day and goodbye